It was 1965, and the Chicago PD was investigating a meatpacking plant reported to be the home of a devil-worshipping cult, complete with allegations of human sacrifice. There, the cops were met with heavy resistance. A firefight broke out between the police and the occult worshippers who flooded out of the plant's basement. The cops were pinned down and in trouble, but they had a secret weapon, heavily armed and decked out in sophisticated ballistic armor and covered in strange insignia. Mobile Task Force Epsilon-9, also known as the Fire Eaters, here to assist the cops on behalf of the SCP Foundation. As always with the Foundation, they had no interest in some mere human cultists. Those were a dime a dozen in the world of anomalous monsters. What the Foundation had taken an interest in was who or what these cultists were worshipping. It all begun a few weeks back, near Danforth Meatpacking, an abandoned meatpacking plant just outside of Chicago. No one had given the place a thought in decades, that is, until people started going missing. Rumors spread of people being snatched in the surrounding woods by figures dressed in robes. Mysterious voices and noises were said to be coming out from the cavernous belly of the plant. Some even reported seeing smoke rising out of the building. Thick, black, noxious smoke. Something was terribly wrong here. Something was anomalous. The Chicago Police Department Strike Force, in association with the Fire Eaters from the Foundation, mobilized at Danforth Meatpacking. While the police were initially reluctant to work with these mysterious figures, they turned out to be indispensable for the raid. There were 47 cultists holding out in the basement of the plant, many of them heavily armed and all of them hopped up on zealous devotion to their unknown master. All except one of the cultists fought to the death during a tense firefight with Chicago PD and the Fire Eaters. The single survivor was still heavily injured and was taken to a secure Foundation facility for emergency treatment and debriefing. Typically, the Foundation would need to perform extensive tests on the Danforth meatpacking plant to discover the source of the anomaly's activity. However, this time, it was a Chicago detective who asked the question that busted the case wide open. Ah, oh, the hell's with the giant pig? And while it would turn out to be a whole lot more than that, there was indeed a giant iron furnace shaped like a pig in the center of the facility. Measuring 15 meters by 25 meters by 20 meters at its widest points, the thing was a behemoth. It had an internal furnace despite no apparent fuel source, and a 5 centimeter slot of unknown purpose on the side of the machine's immense rusted hide. Naturally, all the police officers involved in the raid had their memories wiped and restructured, and they were lucky because they'd remain forever ignorant of the true horrors about to unfold in the confines of that godforsaken factory. As is standard procedure, the plant was isolated, and a Foundation research team, led by lead researcher Westron, under the authority of Regional Director Caleb, was installed on the new provisional site to conduct tests. Other than everyone feeling somewhat uneasy around it, this new anomaly, dubbed SCP-4511 didn't seem to exhibit any strange activities save for its perpetually burning fire. But during the initial research period, a small white card suddenly popped out of the slot in SCP-4511's side. A researcher carefully approached and looked at the card. There was writing. It said, Current demand. A flock of my own. Satisfied. Though nobody on the team had any idea what this meant. After going through a shootout with a considerable death toll to get to it, having a giant metal pig-shaped furnace spit out a cryptic card was strange. But at the secret medical facility where the surviving cultist was being held, things were about to get a whole lot stranger. As he lay in a bed suffering from his injuries, he pulled one of the medical staff close and uttered cryptic, dying words. Give whatever it demands, or your suffering will be beyond measure. He expired seconds later less than 72 hours after the raid. Back at the meatpacking plant, at the exact same time, another white card was produced by the machine, reading, Current demand, the metal teeth that endlessly churn, period, one week. Perhaps this entity was a little more intelligent than they thought. A number of researchers on the team invigorated by this new development were eager to press forward with experiments. Lead researcher Westron, however, did not share their enthusiasm. Something about this entire situation felt like a grim omen to him. This entity had a plan far beyond their understanding, and on some deep animal level, he knew that helping this thing see its plans through would lead to disastrous results. 
On this first gut impulse, he denied the request for further experiments, but Regional Director Caleb had other ideas. Caleb overruled Westron's command, and the experiments began shortly after. The entity, jokingly nicknamed the Swine God by researchers, had made its demand. The metal teeth that endlessly churn. But what could that mean? It wasn't long before the entity began to produce more cards, each with their own strange and esoteric demands. However, on some instinctual level, the researchers at the site understood the demands perfectly. The next card's demand was, the metal of this suffocating prison. Upon receiving this demand, researchers collected scrap metal from around the new site and tossed them into the furnace beyond the swine god's jaws one by one. Inside, they heard the sound of metal crunching. Hours later, all the other metal in the site began to rapidly oxidize and rust, though SCP-4511 itself remained unaffected. The card that came after delivered another simple request. Oil to slicken my frozen joints. The researchers understood and procured three large barrels of oil and tossed them into the furnace. The entity let out a deep gurgle before shaking violently and expelling excess oil, rusted metal, and two domesticated pig femurs. It turns out that the swine god had an appetite for pigs, as the next card that rumbled out of the machine bore the request, Two of my children, made in my image, made in flesh. In response, the researchers provided the entity with two adult pigs. Just like the previous requests, they too were tossed into the fiery depths of the giant pig's mouth, from which came the horrible sounds of pigs squealing, and then a low, guttural gurgling. Next, the request was, The hooks used to hang my children's corpses. To satisfy this request, the researchers provided 17 meat hooks. In response, 4511 spat out a metal sphere at an extremely high velocity, killing observing Foundation Agent McHenry. For reasons that weren't apparent at the time, rather than giving Agent McHenry a proper burial, his body was also fed into the hungry machine. Lead researcher Westron's concerns were mounting, but that didn't amount to much now. 4511 had developed a taste for flesh, and the researchers were all too eager to obey its command. On the swine god's order, it was fed a German shepherd. An hour later, the entity spat out some teeth, six of which came from a dog and one from a human. More than once, it released a card with a blunt request. A worker for the line. The researchers knew exactly what this meant. It required a human sacrifice. SCP-4511 was given two D-Class personnel. One was flung oh. back out seconds later, crunched and burned to death, with several internal organs missing. The other had a more mysterious and altogether upsetting fate. The second D-Class was heard screaming in the belly of the furnace for roughly two hours. Thirty-four minutes later, a strange liquid was excreted by the machine. When the liquid was tested, they found trace amounts of chemicals like pig urine and motor oil, but most disturbing of all, human genetic material that was identical to that of lead researcher Westron. It seemed that the swine god had finally taken an interest in him. After some final requests for large quantities of coal and even human children to fuel its fires, it made a request that sent the whole thing crashing down. The false foreman, delivered to my ma to prove your faith. Lead researcher Westron knew what this meant. They all did. The swine god was demanding him in sacrifice. Lead researcher Westron tried to shut down the entire project, but the swine god was faster than him. One of his own researchers shot Westron in the leg, as the others gathered round and forcibly restrained him. He tried to reason with his subordinates, but it didn't do him any good. The swine god had crawled into all their minds and corrupted them. They were his servants now, and Westron was doomed. Despite his protests, the servants forced him into the mouth of SCP-4511, and after a little over four minutes of screaming, Westron was devoured just like all the other sacrifices. Upon receiving news of the horrors unfolding in the Danforth meatpacking plant, Regional Director Caleb declared the security of the site compromised and sent in Mobile Task Force Epsilon-11, aka the Nine-Tailed Fox. The four elite MTF soldiers were given the simple instruction to figure out exactly what had happened and to eliminate any potentially compromised Foundation staff members who'd fallen under the Swine God's power. When the team arrived, they realized just how far gone the whole place was. 
almost everyone was dead, having been sacrificed to the machine, and the ones that were left were completely insane. They attacked the task force, shouting in their madness about how no matter what the Foundation does to them, it would be nothing compared to what it would do. It had them all under its rusty iron foot. The team was forced to fend off repeated attacks from the pig's devotees, and even found the powers of the swine gods starting to affect their own minds. The beast was more powerful and dangerous than anyone had imagined. The trained Foundation researchers and guards had been transformed into the same cultists they'd fought to gain control of the building by the mind-bending power of the Swine God. The MTF were forced to retreat and return with reinforcements to truly clean the place out. Once a slaughterhouse, always a slaughterhouse. At this point, Regional Director Caleb took personal responsibility over the casualties, since he'd been the one who signed off on the experiments in the first place. He gave up his regional director rank and deemed himself the new lead researcher on the 4511 case. Now that he fully understood the scope and danger of the entity they were dealing with, he wanted to lead the charge in discovering more about the anomaly and hopefully someday negating its deadly effects. This may sound like a happy ending, in spite of all the violence, bloodshed, and human sacrifice that brought us here. But beware of the premature celebration. Despite investigation, the Swine God retained no evidence of the objects, animals, and people it consumed and burned. Perhaps it burnt them down to their very atoms, if those even still existed. What we do know is that not long after, after lead researcher Caleb and his subordinates installed themselves into the facility, SCP-4511 produced one more little white card. It read, Current demand. A flock of my own. Satisfied. And if we've learned anything today, it's that the Swine God gets whatever it demands. A brutal truth that lead researcher Caleb is likely to understand much sooner than he thought. Haven't had your fill of eldritch horrors hiding in disused buildings? Check out our two-parter, SCP-1730, What Happened to Site-13, and SCP-1730, Epic Final Battle at Site-13.